Geralt and Yennefer were reunited, but something even more important happened in Vizima. Geralt learned that Cirilla, his one-time ward, had returned from afar, and she was in danger. He was to find her at the Emperor's command and Yennefer's behest. Hey, what's up everybody? My name is TrophyNut and welcome back to The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt on the Death March difficulty. Last time Yennefer told us what leads we have to finding Cirilla, or Ciri, as she likes us to call her. And that is what we're going to do. But first, uh, there's not much in this room, but I want to show you a little bit of an Easter egg, as you may. There's a book in this case, and you can find it other, uh, in other places as well. And it's called The Last Wish, which is, incidentally, the name of one of the books of Andrew Sapkowski, I think. His name is pronounced. I probably fucked that up, but... That's the, the altar of the Witcher books, so if you look at that really quickly... Oh, I can't even access my inventory right now. So well, I'll uh, keep that in mind. You can check out these documents as well with the drawings of Ciri. Scars healed nicely. Well, it hasn't actually. And the first thing that we're going to do before we set out back outside is talk to Ambassador Varartre here. So we can get uh, caught up on how the situation is in the war and between the different factions of the world. This can be quite boring, so if you want to skip all that, I'll add a banner in the YouTube video so you can skip ahead. But for those of you still with me, let's go ahead. Ambassador Varatra. It can be Yennefer quite interesting about to current events, get up to speed with what happened so on. Of course, in the meantime. The Emperor's servants should keep no secrets from each other. If you will, let us approach the map. So there's the map. So let's start with the war in general. How's the war going? I mean, apart from the fact that Nilfgaard's triumph is imminent. I assume this to be a private conversation. We've no witnesses, so let's dispense with the propaganda, even that shrouded in irony. Our offensive was going splendidly until winter came. Edurn was in such disarray that we encountered no resistance. We had reached the Pontar before the first snows. Only a weakened Kedwin remained, and Radovid's Redania, which had ignored the rest of the North's pleas for help. We thought they'd sue for peace, perhaps even submit to vassalization. We waited for spring, certain of victory. Radovid? Submit? Yes, a vain hope, I agree. Radovid sent no peace envoy, nor did he advance on our positions. Instead, he trudged over the snow-bound Kestrel Mountains and attacked Kedwin, his ally. This attack took the Kedweni by surprise. They were still mourning the loss of their king, Rudderless and dejected, they laid down their arms after a few lost skirmishes and joined Radovid. And so by spring, instead of two weak enemies, we had only one powerful one. And that's what they call a very tactical decision. That admiration I hear in your voice? Radovid is our foe, but I cannot deny he is clever. He played us for fools particularly dense ones at that. Returning to the war, this spring there was a massive battle in the marshes of Velen. Massive, yet indecisive. Both sides suffered enormous losses, unprecedented even. Radovid has retreated across the Pontar. He's safe for now, until reinforcements arrive from the south. Then Emperor Emir Var Emrys will deal with him once and for all. Couldn't you just go home? Save everyone a lot of marching, not to mention a few human lives. I'm afraid the stakes are too high to fold now. We can only go all in. Well, that's a bit of hubris. So, simply said, Radovid took his own ally as a means to grow his army, and therefore took the Nilfgaardians by surprise, making this an even harsher war. So, Valen. How do things look in Valen? As bad as ever. Perhaps worse. This land never flowed with milk and honey. 
and now it flows with blood. Armies have swept through it several times, trampling fields, looting granaries, burning villages. Famine grips the populace. Mm -hmm. So how's ruling that earthly paradise going for you? Not well, to be honest. Our forces are spread thin as it is, and Velen is chiefly swampy forests that are difficult to control. We've had several patrols never return to their camps. Thus, we've temporarily delegated authority in this region to a certain Nordling, a former low-ranking officer in the Temerian army, one Philip Strenger, better known by his nom de guerre, the Bloody Baron. So his war. I advise you well. Avoid him. For those not well versed in French, and then Novigrad, the citadel, the main city. Any news from Novigrad? Is the free city still free? Yes, although everyone knows this won't last. Radovid is in Oxenford, and the Emperor is here, in Vizima, at Novigrad's doorstep, both. And both require coin and ships, and Novigrad can provide these. Which is why the mood in the city is rather, well, on edge. Meaning? How do men deal with fear? They seek reassurance and scapegoats. The Church of the Eternal Fire understands this perfectly, and so it promises to improve the lives of its flock by pointing out the guilty. Who started the war? Who profits from it? Why, it's obvious. Mages, elves, dwarves, in a word, any and all deviants. I've been stationed in Novigrad for 13 years. First as a consul, then as ambassador. I've seen a great deal. Cruelty, cynicism, greed. But what is happening there now concerns me greatly. So, well, yeah, they're plainly murdering, prosecuting, and executing mages, dwarves, and everything else in between that differs just slightly from normal humans. So then, Skellige, the Isles. What's new in to Skellige? The West? Nothing. The Islanders pride themselves on that, don't they? Doing everything according to tradition, as their forefathers did. And like their forefathers, they quarrel with each other, pillage, occasionally attack our transports. This is cumbersome, but nothing more. Skellige has always been a footnote to history, and so it shall remain. Sound awfully confident. What if King Bran manages to unite the Jarls? Lead all the clans against your fleet? King Bran is a feeble old man. From what I know, he barely remembers the names of his own vassals. Uniting all might prove difficult. So the Skelligers are what we practically know as Vikings. So they, they, their culture strongly resembles that. So that's the complete run through of Thanks the for your help. situation. Of it. In the, the land of sun uh, light your path. Oh. Oh, oh, sorry, Ambassador, sorry. We're a bit too close. Personal bubble and all. Thank you. And the fact that I'm a walking tank doesn't help either. He's a bit, um... Well, I wouldn't call him feeble. Or nimble, for that matter. Something in those books? Nope. Okay. So let's go check out these. Maybe some food. So let's get our stuff back from the Chamberlain. That lovely fellow. How might I serve the gentleman? By returning my things. So I can look dashing again. Citrus and cloves. The fragrance will keep the gentleman's robes fresh somewhat longer. Mm. Thanks, bunches. The Empress oh, I'll give the man a hand. Patience. He wants his daughter back safe and sound, as soon as possible. Yeah, mention something of the sort. So long. Goodbye. So, now, normally you would just exit and travel to Valen. But that's not something we're gonna do. Because there is, as you can see on the map, one little exclamation point here. This Nilfgaardian nobleman there's one to play Gwent. I'm gonna do that, but we're gonna skip right ahead so you can see the result. If people want me to do that, 
more often, I will Wouldn't keep it in, but for now I'm gonna just cut it out probably, so you just see the ending of the match. Victory! So it took me a few tries, but I finally managed to beat him, and what do we get in return? 10 crowns, and the Foltest card, so that's actually the previous King of Temeria, I think. I'm gonna put my stuff back. So that's that, maybe even the bonus experience from the trophy we got, and then the bombs back in their place. Don't know why they equipped that, but without further ado, we'll travel to Valum. Here we go. Zoom out, and then we had to Valen to no man's land. Ah, oh yeah, we don't have got, uh, we don't have a lot of choice in the matter, so we'll go to the Hanged Man's Tree. So Valen, the decrepit, swamp-like land in northern Tenerife. So yeah, the hanged man tree is not called that just for show, as you can see. As well, there's people hanging from it. And a great reminder of the tone of the story so far. So this is a very war-torn land. Thank you for purchasing the Hearts of Stone expansion. We can change the first quest of Hearts of Stone, yet we can only recommend starting it if your character level is at least 30. So we'll not be doing that for now. A rune right marked by the icon on your map. This new craftsman, the only of his kind, comes from a far off land and can use his arcane knowledge to considerably improve your equipment. Seek him out and see for yourself. Okay. So the first quest we get is the Nilfgaardian Connection. I'm gonna check that really quickly because I don't think... So that's an explanation that quest difficulty. So that's the Hearts of Stone expansion. But the Nilfgaardian Connection is the one that we're currently on. And that's not from the Hearts of Stone. So that's correct. In search of Ciri, you needed to find Hendrik, an Imperial agent who had been working on Ciri's case and to collect from him what information he had managed to gather. So let's, let's go, go do that. There seem to be a few enemies here to the right. Two wild dogs, we're gonna ignore those at the moment. Don't need to get in too much fighting if it's not needed. So I'm gonna ignore the notice board for now as well and head on words with the main quest first. So on the way we'll probably encounter a few quests like, uh, like this guy, but as I have mentioned before I'm gonna do all of these but in due time. So right now we're on the part of the main quest and I'm not gonna deviate from that. There was someone trying to heal me but as I've said first the main quest towards this Hendrik character. As you can see on the map, there's a lot of enemies. Drowners, wolves, and all sorts of other nasty stuff. But first, we arrive at the Inn at the Crossroads. So it kind of looks like the Inn at White Orchard. So not much difference here. I'm just gonna head right in. Or maybe I'm gonna first check if I can't level actually. Oh no. So we're level 3 right now. Um, so really close to level 4. And that will probably happen soon. So we needed to talk to Hendrik. It's not the end keep. And it's telling me to uh, use my Witcher senses, but. How hard can it be to find a man named Hendrik? Maybe in here? Nope, we're outside again. Ok, 
Okay then. I'll oblige. So there's someone named Bruno. Okay, let's uh, ask around. Looking for a man. Goes by Hendrik. What do you want with him? Want to talk to him. What about? Give me a bottle of something strong. Okay, that was changing the subject. Horses? Who would that be? You gotta go. I'll open the back way for you. Okay, thank you. Got company. Who is it? Inke! Oh. Vodka! Great. Who's this? In? Brave warrior, looks like. Got two swords, see? Oi! Great boy! What's the point of having two swords? I think you already know. Wonder if he keeps an extra prick in his trousers, too. You fucking deaf! Gonna say who you are? Or do I need to loosen your tongue with me knife? What's with all these aggressive types in the inns? Care for a drink? How about I buy everybody around? Why would you? Got the coin for it. Simple as that. I don't drink with strangers. When we share around, won't be strangers anymore. Then we go our separate ways. And which way might yours be? Um, heading to the city, eventually. On my way to Novigrad. City of whores and whoremongers. So are you gonna have that drink? Or not? Cheers. To your health. And mine. Bottoms up! Okay. If you Since want to rest, come with me. On the bench you can use. So since we're playing on uh, that march, I'm gonna try to I avoid unnecessary the fights. Looks like his son. That's on the pretty side, I think to myself. I say probably disguised his daughter. <laughs> Horsons always managed to hide their lasses. Thought he'd outsmarted me. The arse wipe. I mean he hadn't. I plowed the snot out of that little shit. Lad. That's whatever the fuck he was. <laughs> <laughs> Must have surprised the old coot. Very wet himself. <laughs> okay, so these guys are actually assholes. So we were talking to the Enki. Let's continue that conversation. Thanks for not starting a row with those swine. I don't generally poke my nose in other people's business. Looking to stay the night? No. Huh. I'm looking for Hendrik. Man lives in Heatherton. Don't know where that is. Other side of the hill. Looked that away this morning and saw a strange glow. Imperials on the raid, perhaps. But who knows? Hmm. What do you know? Anything else you can tell me about Hendrik? Odd fellow. Arrived from who knows where and for no apparent reason. Shacked up with a widow whose husband was stabbed for a scrap of bread. Baron's men don't like strangers. Aye. He stays out of their way. Always seems to know when they're coming. Always manages to disappear. Thanks, Inky. Okay. So now we need to go to a town, a village called Heatherton. And it seems to be quite far away. Jesus. So let's check out the notice board while we're at it. Good folk, if you see anyone who's hanging in the woods, such as a treats fit for yuletime dangling of branches, ginger bakings, honeyed apples, fritters or pies, and no matter how fierce your belly grows, throw them back. Whoever partakes of those treats is never seen among the living again. Okay. The link keep you'll buy your drinks at the end of the crossroads with Novigrad crowns. We take no other coin. We don't do taps either. More exchanges, save for eat or drink. If anyone doesn't like that, they can go rut for acorns, okay? Forefather's Eve approaches. It will soon be Forefather's Eve, tormented souls, souls who've not known rest after death, hungry, tired, scared ghosts. They'll soon walk among us. We'll carve the jacks and send them into the next world with chant, prayer and kind words. Prepare yourselves. The pallor. I'll take that. Watch what you say, the trees have ears. 
That kind of stranger. Okay, then. Missing. Mickle. My true born brother Mickle is missing. Anyone who finds him, or at least finds out what fate has met him, will be generously rewarded, and I'll slip a good word to the Baron about you as well. You'll find me at the end at the crossroads. Bruno. Okay, the Bruno that was in the inn. We've seen that man already, so we'll take that. And then the missing wife. Good people take pity and hear my plea. My wife Hannah, she's missing. A few days ago she went into the woods and hasn't yet returned. I'm here out of my wits with worry and I will pay any price to the man who brings her back to me. Or at least tells me where to look for her. Nilan, Hunter from Blackbow. So that's another quest I presume. So we have an undiscovered location, probably the thing from the Pallor. And the Wild at Heart quest. And anything else? And the missing brother. I'm gonna track that for now. It's too hard for me now, that was, that's what the skull is pointing out, but since Bruno is here anyway, we'll talk to the man and see what he can tell us about his missing brother. Hello, Bruno. A witcher, and not a second too soon. Yeah, I'm here about that contract you mentioned. I understand you have a contract for me. Oi, it's my brother Mickle. Been a week now since you took the women of Bellows into the hills. The women of Bellows? Bellows were a rich village, till the war passed through. Huts were burned down, larders cleared out, all the menfolk conscripted. Women were left to fend for themselves, without food nor shelter. No one wanted them. Redanians wouldn't let them into Novigrad. So Mickle took them to the old mines, get them out of the rain at least. And I've not had word from him since. So he took a lot of women to the mines. Doesn't sound like that great of a place, though it'll probably make a good hiding spot. So let's talk about the reward. Could look into it, if you paid me more. So that's 280 standard. Let's try to boost that up to about 310. Just a smidgen too high, that. Okay. 305 maybe? Just a smidgen too high, that. Okay, I'll make it around 300. Just a smidgen too God high, that. It. Okay then. 295. Just a smidgen too high, that. Seriously? Okay, if it's not 290, I'll probably stick to 280 then. Just a smidgen. What's the point of this? Okay. All right, my brother's life's at stake, so I can't skimp. It's a deal. Oh, fuck you. I'll look for your brother. All right, I'll look for your brother. How will I recognize him? Shouldn't be hard. He was the only lad in a group of women. <laughs> Corpses aren't always in a condition where I can determine the sex. Corpses? Take it back. They got lost, is all. But Why would I take that back? Worst, well, he had calfskin ankle boots, work of Master Clogs. Told him not to wear him into the hills, he'd only ruin him. But he was so proud of him. Think I know enough. Thanks. Okay, I'll recognize the man by his fancy shoes. Not much to go on, but I'm gonna swap out the quest. Because it's too hard and continue with this Nilf Guardian connection. So there we go. So that's not my horse. Roach! What are you doing here? And we're off again. Okay. Well, I have a feeling this is They're strange, like dropping into a deep cellar on a hot day and the mist. Well, took the words right out of my mouth. Out of my mouth. Thank So it looks like this village has been attacked. Okay. Let's not do that from over here. And 
down they go. 